Greetings, uh, my name is Manuel Gobo Neto, and if you are uh, seeing this recording, it's because I couldn't attend stages in person due to the travel restrictions for COVID. So uh, just sharing my screen with you, my topic today will be endoscopic revision after previous bariatric surgery, why and why. So those are my disclosures, I'll offer you to judge if the presentation is going to be commercial or not. That's the team I probably work with in Brazil and in India. And uh, the topic is uh, weight regain is indeed something that like a phantom goes with uh, bariatric surgery because obesity is a progressive chronic disease and evolves and weight regain are always there. So you can see here the trends uh, for gastric bypass. You can see the considerable part of the patients after uh, five to 10 years regain weight. Uh, uh, as well, it has impact on quality of life or from years uh, in terms of uh, gastric bypass and as well as the gastrectomy. So uh, there is this option of revising uh, the procedure to by gastric bypass by means of uh, endobariatic therapy, specifically in the surgery. Uh, uh, attach it or not, uh, if uh, ablation uh, therapies, quadrivalent ablation therapies, you can see here, uh, this is a way we do the suturing. So we got inside the, the gastric jejunal anastomosis. In that case, we are bleeding the course of the APC. So we uh, have a surgical needle size. Uh, and also we have a suture and we pass from one side to another. So basically we do uh, a full thickness uh, suture. As you can see here, we're passing one side. Uh, to the other. And the uh, question of how much can we remodel and uh, reduce it? So you are about to see uh, on, the, on the following images right now. So you can see here that basically we can remodel uh, at our, our wheel. So we have uh, some uh, data that uh, we have to go uh, beyond 10 millimeters, as you can see here on the following the water after the remodeling. And basically, we have uh, quite some uh, suture patterns. Uh, there is not as hard evidence, but some evidence that the, the push swing may have uh, more durability, but yes, have to be proven. So we have some data to show you, like uh, those uh, randomized control trials. Even with uh, a machine, a suture machine that was old and not full thickness, you can see here. Uh, it's coming from Harvard, from Christoph Thompson, uh, the group who has intervention uh, on red, the in gold and the, the sham group, as you can see here, and they could prove uh, superiority, super superiority against the sham control, as here we see. So in terms of long term, we have uh, at least two uh, papers pointing to durability of five years, like this one that patients uh, after 10 years after bypass, and you can see the trend in dotted line and intervention uh, on the full line, as you can see here, uh, when you, uh, uh, sorry, when you uh, happen that you can uh, reduce it, the size of the stoma from more than 85% to have a better performance as well uh, as if you use push string at least on this, uh, on this paper. And uh, we have meta-analysis that can show to you uh, studies. Meta-analysis in this case it was interrupted suture against figure of eight. And you can see here the studies, uh, uh, were three studies identified, 330 patients on that one. And you can follow the meta-analysis of Lausanne with only about 10 uh, kgs and uh, it translates into 12 to 14 percent of total uh, weight loss. And also it can be uh, successfully being used to treat dumping tsunami as uh, clearly demonstrated by the study from the clinic in Germany. And you can see here that before the food just passing through the bowl and after the suture is retained, so uh, effectively uh, treating the dumping syndrome in there. And how about, uh, how about uh, randomized control trial against uh, suture plus APC and just uh, APC? So it's come from Sao Paulo University, a very well designed uh, randomized trial. Besides small, simple, 20 to 20 in each arm, it could demonstrate that both uh, can uh, be durable and effective up to one year, as you can see here, APC in blue, and uh, APC plus suture in red on that side. Also, we have some RCT trials coming in just in APC. Uh, this one comes from Dr. Gustavo Quadros from Brazil. Uh, 
uh, and is randomized uh, patients to follow the multidisciplinary team against a patient had intervention that was uh, mucosal ablation of uh, argon. So you can see here, again, small trial, but very well designed, 2220 uh, on that. And you can see this is a very classic uh, graphic. So you see here, uh, before the surgery, the weight loss after the surgery, the idea of the patients around 1.5 years, uh, those patients had around 7.5 years of follow-up, the trend in dotted line, the donor weight gain, and the intervention uh, in the sham uh, group and, and control group to note that uh, there was crossover. So uh, the APC group was crossover for clinical uh, follow-up and the sham group was crossed to, uh, to APC. And you can see also in the graph on the right side that they match uh, and meaning that is the superiority of the treated group against the sham, uh, as it can be uh, highlighted here. So uh, how about uh, another RCT trial? So the whys are coming because the whys is that we have a good safety profile and we are uh, efficacious on that. So that's uh, coming from Brazil, Dr. Uh, Dr. Carolina, uh, Ana Carolina Hoff, that she uh, had uh, those 39 patients uh, with poor string tour of 12 months follow up and uh, and APC previous two groups formed one tour and one tour with neraglutide so adding drugs uh, uh, GLP-1 analog to that so the tour group has 18.7 percent of total body weight loss and the tour plus neraglutide much more and it's such a significant of 24.3 uh, percent on that and also it had influence on satiety time as it was measured from that. Also, we now have comparison coming from Harvard, again, Dr. Duke Thompson Group and, and Jarpino Group. Uh, five years, they was presented in this year DGW, and they could compare uh, those groups. And you can see here uh, on the comparison, this group is kind of uh, match the, the surgical group a little bit more of uh, time after the index procedure. And you can see here on this graph, the aggressive comparison that is much less and significantly less. And when we have, uh, they are less severe when compared with the surgical group. In terms of weight loss, initially the surgical group lose more weight, but at the long run, uh, you can see here the kind of match, uh, keeping a little bit of advantage for the surgical group, but uh, the trade-off is the endoscopic intervention safe and doesn't burn bridges, so it can, it can be submitted to surgery. Uh, overall, that, that you can uh, see the confirmation on the area under the code graph that I'm showing just to go now to do. So that's the conclusion that endoscopic revision is safe, uh, is effective, and can be compared with the surgical uh, treatment, but uh, with less complications. Also, we can help on the revisions of sleeve gastrectomy. This is a new topic, as you can see here, that during the time um, the sleeve gastrectomy tends to become more lush more compliance, uh, the tube get bigger and the patients can regain weight. As you can see here, in this case that have uh, seven years after the procedure. And the way we do that is pretty much the same with the endoscopic zygastopathy, U shape or square, uh, sorry, or triangular shape. But you can see here, we can clearly uh, gather ourselves on that, how much we can reduce. So just take a look by yourself from this previous case and what we get uh, on the endoscopy after the procedure, so we can really reduce and narrowing uh, the tool that you can see. What's the experience? So we start with uh, George Eat uh, with initial uh, group, but I have to show you also that the zygastrectomy is subjected to weight gain, uh, as this paper uh, show us on the direction. And that's it. I followed the initial uh, study from George Eats. We have this one that comes basically from Brazil and some patients from Harvard. And you can see here that is effective in all uh, all groups of uh, weight regain. It's in the proper weight, that's one, two, and three. They were effective on that. Uh, the technique is the really one we described previously. And you can see here the graph on the right, uh, uh, the impact on uh, weight loss after the procedure. That. Also, this is a bigger paper, more international, but it can gather uh, in nine centers, international centers all, all over the world, 82 patients on that. And you can see the characteristics of this group or in terms of uh, weight regain. And um, interesting uh, and good 
very safe profile, very safe profile with no severe adverse event reported at least on this international series and we can track here. Uh, the weight loss after the revisional uh, ESG for cybercetomy weight gain around 15% uh, of total body weight loss up, up, up to one year. So you can see here 82 patients and 15.7% of total body weight loss at 12 months. And uh, at 12 months, uh, also uh, at least 52% of those patients have more than 15% of total weight loss, 81% have more than 10% of total weight loss. So uh, with that, we conclude. And why uh, we can offer uh, any bariatric therapies after weight regain or bariatric surgery, it was to me clearly demonstrated, but I offer you to judge and we can discuss on the question and answer. Thank you very much for your attention.